All right, fifth graders, we're going to have a little fun this week with, um, with our water unit. Uh, you're going to create a commercial, a public service announcement about water scarcity. Again, we learned about scarcity back in third grade with our economics unit. Scarcity is a lack. In other words, when we start to run out of something, when we don't have enough of something. So again, we'll create that public service announcement. But first, we're going to have a little lesson uh, about background information. In other words, I'm going to get you ready with some knowledge um, about water scarcity today. Um, after the lesson today, you, you have a puzzle piece uh, activity to do or assignment. And then, like I said, tomorrow we're going to start preparing our commercial slash public service announcement. So a little bit of background, water scarcity explored. When it rains or, or snow melts, water eventually makes its way underground. The water that is not absorbed by plants makes its way farther underground. The water moves deeper through the rocks and empty spaces in the soil, sand, and rocks until it is stopped by an impermeable layer of rock, sand, or soil. The water begins to fill up behind that layer and eventually tops out at a certain layer. That layer is called the water table. Everything underneath is called groundwater. We've talked about surface water, water that we can see on the surface, such as rivers, lakes, streams, etc. Groundwater is underneath the earth, uh, the underneath the earth's surface. Water added to this layer helps it recharge. Remember, recharge comes from snow or rain. Water removed from this layer will cause the water table to fall, meaning there will be less water stored underground. These changes can occur at a local scale or a global scale. NASA's GRACE, that I'll read about in just a little bit, satellite mission was launched in 2002 with the goal of mapping the changes to Earth's gravitational field. The results have given scientists unprecedented data on changes taking place to the Earth's groundwater reserves. The huge storehouses of groundwater are known as aquifers. Aqua, think about water, aqua. And uh, underneath the Earth is the groundwater. The huge storehouses are called aquifers. Scarcity can now, our scientists can now measure the changes in the levels of the Fortunately, they don't know exactly how much water is under the Earth's surface. Listen as I read the article about that, and you may read it yourself. It can be found in your science course today. You will answer questions about the article in a puzzle piece assignment. Uh, so listen carefully or read carefully. Prove it. How much water is in a swimming pool? Swimming pools are fairly small, simple shapes. It doesn't take long to move from one end to the other. A formula will tell you the volume or how much water fits inside. What about a larger uneven shape? For example, how much water is in a lake that is not a perfect circle or rectangle? At the lake's edge, you can stand up and touch the bottom, but you can't stand farther out in the middle. Lakes are much larger than a standard pool. From one side, the other shore could be very far away and you can't see it. The length and width of, of of the lake from end to end is its area. Because the depth of the lake changes, the volume is the lake's average depth multiplied by its, by its area. Lakes hold millions of liters of water. That's how people can measure the volume of surface water. What about the groundwater we can't see? Scientists claim that there is more fresh water in the ground than what is in the lakes. Fun fact, an average pool about two meters or six feet deep holds over 100,000 liters, around 36,000 gallons of water. How do we measure how much groundwater exists where we live and all around the world? This is something scientists and engineers are trying to figure out. Since we cannot x-ray the earth to see the groundwater, 
we have to find other ways to measure the water. One way people do this is by measuring from the ground. People drill a well and measure the distance from the top of the well to the, to the water's surface. This is called depth of water measurement. It takes a lot of labor to drill wells because people have to use big machines. Millions of people get their water from private wells, but no one makes the people who use the water measure it or report how much has been used. Monitoring wells are, monitoring wells are drilled to take measurements. Ground measurement works for one small area but not for a whole state, a country, or all the continents. The best way engineers have to monitor groundwater is not on the ground. It is from space with satellites. Satellites are man-made objects orbiting the Earth in space that collect information or aid communication. You can see a photograph of a satellite that orbits Earth. Satellites can be designed for many purposes. One purpose is, ob is observing the Earth. The satellites that observe Earth from a distance and the things they tell us are quite remarkable. In 2002, NASA launched a mission called the Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment, also known as GRACE. GRACE is a pair of satellites where one follows the leader as they move and scan the Earth. They are spaced about 220 kilometers, 137 miles apart. The satellites are designed to be a tool that measures mass from space. Mass is the amount of matter in solids, liquids, and gases. Landforms have mass. Ocean water has mass. Even wet soil and water under the ground have mass. Anything that has mass also has a gravitational attraction. As mass increases, gravitational attraction increases. So when the lead satellite passes an area of stronger gravity, it pulls away from the trailing satellite. The trailing satellite has to pass over the same spot to catch up. The distance between the two satellites is measured every five seconds. It takes about a month for both of the satellites to scan the whole Earth, including the oceans. How is it that GRACE can tell us everything about groundwater? Satellites look at the changes in gravity caused by the changes in mass. If GRACE passes over mountains today, the same mountains will be there next month unless a major Earth event takes place. The mass of the mountain is not likely to change. Groundwater also has mass. And unlike the mountain, that mass can move around and change. Think about the swimming pool again. One month, it is filled almost to the top. A month later, it is leaking and the amount of water, is in, the, it, it, of water in it has gone down. The mass of the water in the pool has changed. Grace looks for changes like that in groundwater. Even small changes in spacing between satellites are enough to prove that the mass of something on Earth changed. Since water moves, its distribution changes. Grace sees it by finding the change in mass. We see a photograph over to the right here. The mass of a mountain won't change much from month to month, but the mass of water in the ground does. As people keep pulling more and more water up from the ground to grow crops, to produce goods, and to use every day in homes, groundwater levels change. There is not always enough rain or snow melt to replace what people pump out, especially in arid zones. When GRACE makes its scan, it can tell that the amount of groundwater is changing by detecting a difference in the gravity field from month to month, because it only takes a month for GRACE to scan the entire Earth. Scientists can quickly gather groundwater change data, and they can gather it on a global scale rather than just in one place. This is a breakthrough for identifying areas of the world where the water supply is most threatened. And we see groundwater is important for growing crops, obviously. The capabilities of these satellites are amazing. Considering they were not designed for hydrologists, scientists discovered the technology could be applied 
studying groundwater. But even the best tools have limitations. While GRACE can prove that groundwater levels change, it doesn't know how much water is actually in the ground. That means that currently there is no way to prove how much groundwater is stored in the earth or know how long the water supply will last. This map shows data collected by GRACE. The blue aquifers are gaining water and the red aquifers are losing water. So take a look at the map. So we see the blue are gaining water, the red are losing water. Then we have a key down below just to let us know where these places are and where the water is. I will also put a copy of this in your course today so you can read through yourself uh, or you can skim through when you're attempting to answer questions on the puzzle piece today. All right. In the next lesson, we will take a look back at our water footprint. If you remember the water footprint from a couple weeks ago, how much water we actually use and how much virtual water is used going into the food that we eventually eat. Uh, we'll also look back at the amount of freshwater versus saltwater and our freshwater sources. That's what we did last week when we focused on freshwater versus saltwater. We noticed that there is a lot more saltwater and even of the fresh water we have, uh, not all of it is usable. A lot of it is trapped in glaciers, if you recall. Uh, we'll also think about water as a scarce natural resource, uh, a natural resource that uh, we would like to conserve in order for life to survive on Earth. After all that, the fun will begin. You will have the, you will have the opportunity to create a public service announcement, a video commercial about conserving our water supply. So again, today was all about background, information, thinking about um, water as a scarce resource. And tomorrow will we'll be about uh, getting ready to create your public service announcement that your classmates will have a chance to see. So good luck with the puzzle piece today. Again, the article uh, that I just read will, will also be in the course today. And um, I will see you soon.